In 1885, William Warren, the first president of Boston University, published his work Paradise Found, The Cradle of the Human Race at the North Pole. In the book, he recites scientific explanations and ancient cosmology that all point to the same conclusion. Paradise is located at the North Pole. Warren points to the Garden of Eden at the North Pole, as well as Atlantis, Mount Meru, Avalon, and Hyperborea. Hyperborea, the ancient Greek paradise, broken down means beyond the aurora borealis. This emerald colored light shoots out of the center of our plane, where there is a vortex leading into this long lost paradise. In his book, Warren mentions the night skies of Eden, showing an early depiction of the aurora borealis. And over the years, many have suggested that Hyperborea was the original Garden of Eden. So Hyperborea, Eden, Avalon, Agartha, Shambhala, these are all different names that have been given over the years to the same paradise. Warren calls the North Pole the navel of the earth. And like I've been saying, all compasses point north to this paradise, urging us to come pass into Earth's center, Earth's navel. He discusses the tree of life and its relation to this paradise. According to Genesis, at the center of the Garden of Eden stood a majestic tree. Its fruit was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired. Similarly, Many ancient cultures associated a tree of life, or world tree, with the center of the world, locating this tree at the true North Pole. The world tree is typically said to be a massive tree, extending high above the clouds with its roots deep in the underworld. We have Valagfa in Hungarian mythology, Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, the Ashvata in Hindu mythology, the Kianmu in Chinese mythology, the Mayan world tree, and there's many more. Warren writes, where stood this tree was at once the source of all other trees and the giver of immortality. Through the center vortex is paradise. It's the holy grail in which when we drink from, we achieve everlasting life. Like Warren says, immortality. The world tree was real, its roots extended up from the underbelly of our flat earth, and this organism spread out across our plane. This was an interconnected organism made up of giant trees. Most of what we call mountains and plateaus are the stumps of these trees. They, along with the tree of life, were cut down. And this truth is revealed to us in James Cameron's Avatar, the main tree of souls is said to be the closest connection to Ewa. Ewa in Avatar is the guiding force and deity of Pandora. The natives believe that Ewa acts to keep the ecosystem of Pandora in perfect equilibrium, but the tree of souls which connects to this deity is cut down, just like our tree of life was. Ewa refers to our connection with Mother Earth, Gaia, the divine feminine goddess. This is clear because Ewa comes from the Celtic word Dewa, meaning goddess. Once the tree of life and the other interconnected trees were cut down, our connection to this goddess diminished and the spiritual and physical equilibrium of this plane drastically shifted. Both sides of Flat Earth used to be paradise, but by cutting down this tree and therefore our ties with the Divine Mother, Along with many other events that occurred around the same time period, this side of our flat earth became a cradle for archonic and reptilian influence. This majestic organism isn't dead, however. It is still well and alive past the center vortex. Warren writes, Every indication points us to the northern pole. It was in Aaron Vej, the Persian Eden. He claims in Aaron Vej there was said to be a sacred mountain. This is Mount Meru. Like I said, mountains are giant tree stumps, so Mount Meru, the magnetic mountain which is depicted all throughout ancient cosmology, is actually what's left of the Tree of Life. In this map made by the 14th century explorer Gerhard Mercator, there is an iron mountain at the middle called Mount Rups Nigra, 
at the North Pole, with four rivers extending outwards. The tides on Flat Earth are not caused by the moon, but by these four rivers that diverge from Mount Maru. They breathe in and out, causing the tides. Eden was also said to have four rivers, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became four heads. Mercator described the island in a 1577 letter to John Dee. In the midst of the four countries is a whirlpool, in which there empty these four indrawing seas which divide the north. Right under the pole there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea. Its circumference is almost 33 French miles, and it is all of magnetic stone. In his 1904 Manual of Tides, Dr. Roland A. Harris gathered evidence from tidal patterns and sightings by Europeans and Inuit that all pointed to undiscovered lands near the pole. To Harris, the tides suggested that there was a hidden mechanism at the North Pole that influenced the tides. This mechanism is the Four Rivers. So Warren talks about the Persian Chinvat Bridge being situated near Mount Maru by Aaron Vesh, the Persian Eden. Warren writes, the Chinvat Bridge extends from the North Pole of the Heavens to the North Pole of the Earth. The Norse tail of the Bifrost Bridge is linked to the center of our plane. Those who cross the Bifrost successfully are transferred into Asgard, the land of the gods. William Warren at the end of the book concludes long lost Eden is found, but its gates are bared against us. Now, as at the beginning of our exile, a sword turns every way to keep the way of the Tree of Life. Similarly, the story of the Bifrost Bridge speaks of Heimdallr. Heimdallr is the watchman of the gods, and he sits on the edge of heaven to guard the Bifrost Bridge, determining who crosses to and from Asgard. We know this is talking about the center of our plane because Heimdallr is often connected to Yggdrasil. In the same vein, one of the etymologies of the Chinvat makes it the bridge of the judge. This tells us there is a spiritual filter in place at the center vortex, meaning only those who vibrate at frequencies of love and truth can pass through. The 2012 movie Upside Down is an allegory for our displacement out of Eden. The film starts with the main character Adam telling the story of his realm, where two worlds lay on top of one another. Two twin planets whirling together around one sun, but each with its own and opposite gravity. Now in our world, it's possible to fall up and to rise down. Adam and Eden are lovers. They are from the opposite worlds and therefore are not allowed to have intimate contact. Because of this, they are attacked one day, and Eden falls and hits her head. Adam grows up and finally is reconnected with Eden, only to find out she's forgotten all about him. The accident caused her to have amnesia. But over the course of the movie, Eden starts remembering Adam, and the paradise that was found in their love is rekindled. At the end, the love between Eden and Adam create everlasting ripples in reality, and because of this, both worlds become a paradise where the prejudice and separation are dissolved. At the beginning of the movie, we see an upside-down triangle. An upside-down triangle where the tip is pointing downwards symbolizes the female. When we bring the inverted triangle of the feminine together with the upright triangle of the masculine, we find balance. The upside down triangle is pointing towards the source of the goddess, the black sun. The union between the masculine and feminine will reactivate our divinity. In the same vein, our union with the Garden of Eden will do the same, giving us everlasting life. The inverted triangle shows our flat, motionless plane on top, and it's all converging downward much like the singularity of a supposed black hole. Black holes aren't in space. Space does not exist. It's 
of fabrication along with our globe model to ultimately hide the fountain of youth at the center. The reason black holes show a jet coming out is because they're slyly revealing to us that the aurora borealis shoots out of the center, where it's like a black hole, a vortex sucking those who pass through in. Funny enough, at the beginning of 2016, Stephen Hawking came out claiming that black holes are a portal into another realm. Like the movie, we were once connected to Eden. Outside forces tampered with our connection to paradise, and now we must find our way back. This information is coming out throughout myself and others now because Eden is calling. We are being guided home. And therefore, it's no coincidence this movement is growing and growing. A corporation was set up in our name when we were born, hence why the name on our birth certificates has all capital letters. Corporations are dead. This is how the elite see us, as the walking dead, that we refuse to give in to this fake reality we've been fed, and that ultimately, we intend to get to the Garden of Eden. We're taking back this matrix and this isn't going away. This journey is happening within a few years time. There's no stopping it. Our compass needles will be our guide and we will pass through where the Aurora Borealis is shooting out from. Green is go. And just like in Mario World, to get to the world underneath, we must go down the Emerald Pipe. <laughs>